Making homemade cottage cheese is so much easier than you might think. If you're like me, perhaps you haven't tried it because you didn't know that you could make it, or you've heard that you have to have a special ingredient called rennet. I've not ever actually looked for rennet in my grocery store, but it's definitely not an item that I've stumbled on, and I've been up and down every aisle. I found a recipe online several years back that only calls for milk, vinegar, and salt for flavoring. So stick around and learn how to make cottage cheese the easy way. I think you're going to like it. To make your very own cottage cheese, you will only need eight cups of milk. I use whole milk. I think you could actually use skim milk, 2%, whatever percentage. So what you want to do is pour your eight cups of milk into a very nice heavy duty stock pot and you will want to stir it constantly over a medium heat. I always tend to turn things up higher than I should because I'm impatient so I have mine up a little more than medium but I'm not going to leave the pan, I'm not going to walk away and I'm going to stir it non-stop. I'll, I'll stop the camera so I'm not annoying you with the sound of the spoon against the pan. But we're going to stir that until it gets nice and steamy just really about like you would like a hot shower. 120 degrees is the temperature that you want at maximum. I don't have a thermometer so I am going to just base it off of how I would like my showers and I like to take very hot showers so I come out looking like a lobster so that's about the temperature that I'm going to get my milk. Okay, The temperature is about where I want it to be. I can stick my finger in it but it's getting almost uncomfortable so I'm going to pull this off of the heat doing it one-handed. I lost my camera people today. Stir it around a little more so the heat's kind of even. Make sure. Yeah, it might even be a little too hot. Maybe a tad. Let it sit for just a moment. It's cool out today. We've got a nice breeze coming in through the window. Hopefully the pan will cool off just a bit. Okay, I think that's about right, really. So you're going to very carefully pour in your half a cup of vinegar. I actually had filmed this once before, and somebody thought it would be cute for my family to replace an entire bottle of vinegar with water. So the last batch didn't do what this batch is doing. I don't know how well you can see this, but it's actually already beginning to separate. How cool is that? So I'm just going to very carefully mix the vinegar in. You can see the, the milk proteins are separating, I guess that is. Well, at any rate, I kind of sound like a ding-dong because I don't know what I'm talking about, but you can see the whey separating. Isn't that beautiful? The process begins that quickly. And I don't want my curds to be super small, so I'm definitely going to be gentle while doing this. Now, what you want to do, and keep it off of the heat, you're going to cover your pot and let it sit for about half of an hour. In the meantime, you want to prepare a colander, which I've taken the time to do it a little ahead of time. Line it with either cheesecloth or a thin tea towel or a baby blanket, something that's thin and clean. And you want to place it inside of another container. I just use another stock pot to catch the whey. So after your cottage cheese mixture sits in the pan for half of an hour. We will drain it into the cheesecloth lined colander and it's all downhill from there. In the meantime while you are waiting for your 
cottage cheese to firm and cool down. You can also make the mixture that the cheese will rest in. It is simply a half of a cup of either milk or cream. I just used whole milk. Cream is good, but for someone who's wanting to reduce the fat content in this recipe, you could use milk, skim milk, 1%, 2%, any variation. And an eighth of a teaspoon of salt or more to taste. And you just mix that together. And that is going to go into your final product to make it creamier and to give it the flavor. So the 30 minutes is up and I have my pan placed with the colander and the cheesecloth inside of my sink. Just mostly because the height is comfortable for me. And I'm going to very, very gently pour the cottage cheese into the cheesecloth lined colander. I'm going to let that drain for just a few moments and then I'm going to remember to remove the pan that has the whey underneath because the whey is very nutritional and it can be used in soups or in shakes. Now it will have a sour flavor because of the vinegar in it but it's still really amazing um, the nutrition that is in whey. So. I'm going to let that sit for just a few moments and then I'll show you the next step. I think it's drained about as much as it's going to. So I'm going to remove that pan. There. I don't know if you can see the way. And then we are going to want to rinse the curds in cool water to get the vinegar off and to further cool down the cottage cheese. I'm going to use my clean fingers to gently separate the curds and to help rinse them. This is not a process that needs to be rushed. We can take our time with it. Let that drain for just a few moments. And I actually don't wash all of the vinegar off of my cottage cheese because I like a little tangier flavor to mine. Otherwise I find it to be very bland. But you do want to wash most of it. I've had some of my blog readers tell me that their texture came out a bit more like ricotta cheese, but that what it was amazing. And for me, each batch has been a slightly different texture, just depending, I think, on how patient or impatient I've been with the process. So at this point, I'm going to draw the cheesecloth up carefully and gently press as much of the liquid out as I possibly can. As you can see, this eight cups of milk only renders 
perhaps two cups of cottage cheese by the time it's mixed in with the cheese with the milk that's used to flavor it with. So that is one more reason in my book to save the whey because otherwise you're throwing all of that nutrition away from milk. There have been times when our milk prices were so high that I did not make our own cottage cheese at all because it just seemed like such a waste. However, if you have your own dairy supply or when the prices of milk are down and if you will use the whey it can be economical as well. But it's always worth trying just to know how to do it in my book and to enjoy the flavor of fresh homemade cottage cheese. And I'm still getting quite a bit of liquid out. I want to make sure that it's not watery. As you can see, it's definitely has sort of a ricotta-like texture this time. And for the final step, you simply take the cheese out of the cheesecloth, place it into the dish that you intend to serve it in. I like to break mine up very carefully with a fork. And then I pour the milk salt mixture over the top of it. It may look a bit soupy at the moment, but I'm going to place this in the refrigerator, cover it, and let this sit for several hours to chill. And when this is finished, this will be every bit as delicious, and then some, as any cheese that you can buy in your supermarket. And you have the satisfaction of knowing how to make cottage cheese with just three simple ingredients from your home. Isn't that beautiful? You have to try this. I want to hear how you liked it. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button. And don't forget to subscribe on your way out for more how-to videos. Thanks for watching.